like to play League of Legends, and when we die, we blame others, right? I think we should do a lot more of the blaming, but not others. It's time to blame ourselves for once. You see, there's a number of things we can all take away from our own game replays, from when we died, to why we died, and how we died. And by looking at only our deaths, we can easily, usually, not always, find out where we could have done things differently to hopefully survive. Hopefully. But we don't have to stop there. We can also look at how and where we died to get extra information on how we can learn to prevent those deaths in the future we may improve. The deaths aren't the only things we should pay attention to. Yes, while they are important, they're not the only things you should look at. Something we can also look at is just simply how we laned. How much damage did we sustain? How much damage did we trade back? How was our movement? Did we space correctly if we were playing a ranged champion? If the answer to all of these questions are somewhat positive, well, congrats, motherfucker, we are improving. But we're not done yet, because we can go even deeper. No, not like that. Something else important to look at is how and when we recalled. As recalling randomly can, and likely is, hurting our performance over the entire game due to either experience loss, gold loss, trading incorrectly. I can go on. But if we can just get recalling right, we can already cut out, I would say, roughly 60% of our game's losses, or at least make ourselves a more consistently positive element in the game, because incorrect recalls are hurting us a lot more than, you, than we realize. Let's say we get our recalls all sorted out and we learn all the insides of recall timers. What is next? Well, next up is actually trading patterns. You see, when we are in lane, the rules and goals of each lane changes based on the champions in the game and in the lane. But usually the goals are the same. That rhymed. I'm not a rapper, trust me. One, try to keep more health than the enemy. Two, if we are an early killing champion, we try to get first blood or at least get a kill on our opponent. Three, if we are not an early champion, we try to force out the enemy of the lane, making them miss CS and experience. Four, win lane. So we either get the tower first or we get five roughly kills over our opponent. Concept of laning and everything can be an entire video of its own though. So let me know if you want that. So let's say you've won or lost your lane. Why do we usually lose up to 40% win rate just because we lost lane? Well, that's a rough statistic, but in ranks lower than masters, I'd say. It would, it would be rather accurate. In my experience, it has to do with the multiple thing, with multiple things. People's mental, people baby raging, the game state, if there's a high precary in the team. But mostly it's because a lot of us don't know what to do in the game after laning phase. You see, there's a whole different side to league after laning. I would even go as far as say that the game truly begins after you get out of lane and you transition into the mid game. Let's say you've won or lost lane and now you are lost on what to do. Your bot lane goes mid, your top lane is everywhere, and now what do you do? I'm assuming, when mentioning this, that you are a mid main, like me. If you're not, well, it's still relevant to you. Well, there's not one answer, sadly, for that. There's a lot of things we could do. Fair warning, before I continue, this is usually the part of the game where people start to kind of lose in 50-50 an otherwise perfectly winnable game. One, we could look at our teammates' lanes and see if they're either low or if they're being pushed. Two. Our dragons up then likely we should try our best to secure it as a lot of dragon buffs on our team can make us very powerful especially with the elder dragon around 35 minutes that execute is fucking the one objective a lot of people get wrong in loilo though is baron we've aced the enemy team we have their mid tower open their inhibitors down we should go for baron right and close out the game no well yes but not always. Stuff like that. If you are champion, if you're playing a champion who takes towers really well, usually it is the right play to go for towers, utilizing the enemy death timers. But getting those death timers up can be a bit tricky. Well, that's a perfect segue into this next part. Let's say the enemy team has two really tanky champions. Think Mundo, think Nautilus. How can we kill those? Should we even kill them? In what order should we focus the enemy down? Well, depending on our champion of choice, our order of focus in the team fights changes a lot mages we are basically backline artillery making sure the tanks and the dps cannot get onto our carries assassins we are the black sheep we can do it all but usually we will die in the team fights our job is to take out priority targets fast and hopefully survive tanks not much to say other than just tank damage for your team be a big fucking meat shield making the china wall look small in comparison, making the first engage, and we are expected to die. Okay? 
Now, 80Ks, this is a special bit for you guys. You are the most important part of the team fight. So don't let your ego get up, usually. But you also pop like a fucking balloon. So please stay near your tanks. Supports, I love you guys. Uh, you guys don't get enough love. You're honestly the secret carry. You are basically the babysitter of the team, usually providing shields, buffs, or CC, and keeping your ADC safe. What's next? After you've left the mid game, usually around 30 minutes, we enter into the late game. This is the part of the game where everything fucking matters. If we die, we are dead for 40 plus seconds. That is a time. That is so long. So depending on our role in team fights in the mid game section, we'll be continuing doing the same thing with a bit of little bit extra. Now people are going to be looking to close out the game after fights. So kill the Nexus. And they'll be trying to do this by taking towers and barons to push out lanes into our base and ultimately win the game. One thing that I personally see a lot of my own games is while I'm busy team fighting, my team gets caught in the top side jungle near Baron. Now I'm left to defend against two counter split pushers on my own. One on top lane and one on bot lane. And usually with my champs, I'm an assassin slash mage man. That usually results in a shit fest where I die and they finish. But we can't change how our team played that. All we can control is how we played it. Did we play reactive? Reacting to their action? Or did we play directive? Did we take action? A lot of the times we will lose games that are out of your control. Our team is hinting. We are getting caught in a random rotation from the enemy jungler that sh honestly should not have been there. Their 4-0 Tom Kench top lane, fuck Tom Kench, comes onto our lane, killing us with no count for play, especially Heartsteel. Remove Heartsteel Riot, please. And while these things are annoying to deal with, and often feel very unfair. Random things like that is why I and so many other people like playing solo queue. Because it's never the same mundane game. There's always some new random shit happening and there's a lot of things we can control. How we fight, how we lane, how we trade, when we roam, and how we build, what champion we play. While it's very easy to blame others, it does nothing to our growth. It just makes us mad. And that results in us making more mistakes, rendering into the result of seeing that beautiful, amazing, sexy, bronze, iron, and silver rank at the end of the season. If you enjoyed this video, let me know. I'll be making more. And speaking of making more, check out this video where I play Zoe, as I'm currently learning her how to play her in lane and team fights, etc. If you got tips, feel free. And maybe you can take away a couple of things. Who knows?